I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I'm continuing talking about uh, similarity. In this case, we will talk about similarity of triangles. Well, as uh, I'm sure you've noticed, we are trying to consider more and more complicated geometrical figures. We considered angles, segments, now we are combining them together into triangles. Next will be polygons, obviously, you understand. All right, so today is about triangles. Um, what we have learned from the previous lectures is that transformation of scaling, homothety, as they call it, um, uh, preserves the angles and uh, converts, transforms all segments into other segments parallel to the uh, original ones, having the lengths equal to the lengths of the original multiplied by the factor of scaling. So if there is a scaling, which is a center and a factor, then the image of every angle is angle congruent to the one which is given, and image of every segment is the one which is parallel and uh, length of which is multiplied by uh, the factor. Therefore, if you have a triangle and some center of uh, scaling, let's say scaling by factor of 2, it goes this way. And that would be our new triangle. So this new triangle is similar to the original triangle. And what's important, its angles are exactly the same, and sides are proportional to the sides of the original, proportional in terms of the ratio between the lengths of any corresponding sides is exactly the factor of uh, scaling. Now, the question is whether the reverse is true, which means if two triangles have three angles equal to each other and sides are proportional, which means there is a, the same ratio between the lengths of all corresponding sides, then they are um, similar to each other, which means they can be transformed one into another using some scaling. Well, the answer is yes. So the proportionality, proportionality of the sides and the quality of the lengths, uh, of the angles, sorry, is not only necessary, but also a sufficient condition for similarity of triangles. Now, actually, there are some much simpler statements. Uh, you don't really have to have all angles equal to each other and all sides proportional to each other to, to get to the similarity. You can uh, suffice with a simpler statement, actually three different simpler statements. For instance, it's sufficient to have only two angles equal to each other. Well, obviously, because the third angle will also be equal, uh, because the sum should be equal to 180 degrees. But it's also sufficient to have two angles to have sides proportional to each other. And I'm going to prove it. Another simplification is you don't have to have all three angles equal and all three sides proportional. You can have only one angle equal to another and sides which are making these angles proportional to each other. That's, that is also sufficient for similarity. And the third, again, you don't have to have three angles equal and three sides proportional. It's enough to have three sides proportional. It's sufficient for similarity. Now, when I'm saying it's sufficient for similarity, it means that 
there is a scaling which would transform one triangle into another. Maybe combined with some parallel shift or anything like that. That's obvious. So, we have three different theorems. Each one of them states some kind of a condition which is sufficient for similarity. And I'm going to prove one after another. However, before doing that, I will prove auxiliary theorem called lemma. Lemma is auxiliary theorem. And uh, using this lemma, I will prove each one of those three theorems. OK, so what is this lemma? If you have a triangle, and a point somewhere on one side, and the line parallel to the base, and N is a point of intersection of this line, which is parallel to base, with another side, then triangle BMN is similar to triangle uh, ABC. Now, how to prove the similarity? <coughs> well, to prove the similarity, we, we, we have to actually uh, find the scaling, which transforms one into another. So, uh, scaling means we have to define what's the center and what's the factor of scaling. So, I choose point B as um, a center, and I choose the factor AM over MB as a scaling factor. So, What I have to prove is that if I use exactly the same scaling factor and apply to segment BN, I will hit the point C. Right? So how can we do it? Well, um, we will do it in a similar fashion to uh, to the way how I was proving that during this uh, transformation of scaling, all segments are um, changing their lengths proportionately. Let's assume that this factor is some kind of a rational number, P over Q. Now, what does it mean? that the ratio between lengths of this and lengths of this is some rational number PQ. Well, it means that there is some kind of a uh, unit segment which would fit P times in AM and Q times in uh, BM, right? So let's say we will do it this way. So it fits one, two, three, four times, and five, six, seven, eight. Well, let's make it a little bit less obvious. Okay. So it will be four times here. 5 times here, so it will be uh, oh, sorry, that's wrong. Not A, M to AB. A, B. A, B to M, B. My fault, sorry. So it will be 9, 5, right? 
So what does it mean that this ratio is equal to PQ, like in this case, 9, five, nine, nine, nine over 5? It means that there is some unit segment which fits 9 times in the big one and, uh, and, and 5 times. No, this is 4. Again, my mistake. And 4 times in this case. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 5 here, so it's 9 all together. All right, so 9 over 4. So this unit segment, this small one, fits 9 times in AB and 4 times in MB. That's what basically factorization means. All right. What do we do now? Now, since we have this unit segment, we basically divide the whole AB into nine, um, nine partitions, nine segments, and draw parallel lines. Now, one, two, three, four. So the fourth point of division, starting from B to A, will um, fall onto point M, and the ninth would fall onto point A. Or, if you wish, the point number Q, in a general case, will fall onto M, and point number uh, division point number P will fall onto A. Now, since I have drawn all lines parallel to the base AC, line MN will be among them, because M is one of the division points, so they will coincide. So I will have whatever number of lines here, but the line number uh, Q would coincide with MN. Now, obviously, as we know, and again, I mentioned this in the previous lecture about uh, segments, if you have equal segments on one uh, side of the angle and parallel lines which are intersecting another, you will have equal segments here, which means the number of segments will be exactly the same, which means uh, P in this case, or 9 in our particular case, and the number which fits into this part will be also the same as this, which is Q, or for, <clears throat> for in our case. Which means that the ratio of these two would be exactly the same as the ratio of these two, which is P to Q, or 9 to 4. So this actually proves for any, for any rational factor F that um, the, the ratio between BM and BA is the same as BN to BC. So all I need to do is, for any point M, draw a parallel line, and now I have a top triangle which is similar to the whole triangle, as long as these lines are parallel. Now, I have proved it only in case BM to AB is a rational number. And again, as in the previous lecture, I'm not going to um, oversimplify saying, OK, it's obviously that for any real number that's true. It's not obvious, because irrational numbers are not easy to define, and uh, it, it needs significant amount of efforts to really rigorously prove it for irrational numbers. However, since any irrational number can be approximated to any degree of precision, with rational numbers, you can probably say that it's kind of obvious that this theorem can be proven. And it is. Yes, it can be proven, so let's just take it for granted that for irrational numbers, the theorem can be expanded. And that's why um, I'm basically stating that this particular lemma, this auxiliary theorem, that if you take any point on a triangle's side, draw a parallel line, you will cut the uh, triangle similar to the big one. Okay, we will use this particular lemma to prove our three theorems. Each one of them um, basically um, states a sufficient condition for two triangles to be similar. Okay, theorem number one 
it's uh, angle one and angle two are congruent to angle one and angle two. Now, what does it mean? It means that you have two triangles and they have this angle and this, this angle and this congruent to each other. It's sufficient for these two triangles to be uh, similar. I think I have to correct it slightly. Something like this. All right, how can we prove it? <clears throat> okay, let's say this is a B C, and this is a prime B prime C prime. So I know that these angles and these angles are congruent to each other. Now, what do I do? Okay, let's take this uh, segment, A prime, B prime, and find the point M in such a way that these two segments have the same lengths. So AM as a segment is congruent to A prime, B prime. And I draw a line parallel to my uh, line, my, my side BC. So MN is parallel to BC. Well, since these are parallel lines, these angles are corresponding, and that's why they're equal. Now, this angle and this uh, are equal to each other, and that's why, since these are equal, these two angles are equal. Now, if you consider these two triangles, the line, the, the side AB, uh, A prime, B prime, and, and AM are the same by construction. This angle is, um, uh, again, equal by um, condition of the theorem. This, we have just proved that this angle is also equal. So what do we have? Triangles are congruent to each other by angle, side, and angle. So these are two congruent to each other. But these two, the small one and the big one, are similar to each other because of the lemma we have just proven. We took the point and drew a line parallel to an opposite side. That's the proof that this triangle being congruent to this and this being similar to this that's why this is similar to the ABC. And the proof. <coughs> so this is angle and angle. So if you remember, for congruency, uh, we need like three elements. Angle, side, angle, or side, angle, side, or three sides. For uh, uh, similarity, we need slightly different conditions. The first condition we were just facing was two angles. That's sufficient for similarity. Now, the second condition is um, side, well, it is side, angle, side, but it's a proportional side, angle, and another proportional side. So if you have one triangle and then another triangle, and you know that these angles are um, congruent to each other, and side A prime, B prime, C prime, A, B, C, and A, B, over A prime B prime is equal to A C over A prime C prime. So if you know that the sides which are forming this angle are proportional, then triangles are uh, similar. Compare it with congruence. Compare it with two triangles are congruent if 
two sides and angle in between are equal to each other. In this case, sides must be proportional and angle equal. So whenever you're replacing equality with proportionality, you are basically shifting from uh, congruence to similarity. Because similarity, again, is something which is proportional as far as the sizes of the sides, but, uh, but, but, but the angles are supposed to be the same. So that's why we have a, this particular difference. Whatever was equal for congruence, proportional for similarity. Okay, how can we prove it? We'll do exactly the same way as in the previous theorem, which means I take this length and find the point M and draw a parallel line. So this is equal to this. Now, uh, now what do I know? I know that AM is the same as A prime B prime, right? Now, uh, in which case I can replace this with AB divided by, instead of A prime B prime, I will put AM. Okay? Now, I know <coughs> that triangle AMN is similar to triangle ABC, which means that AB to AM is supposed to be equal to AC to AN, right? Which means AC to AN. AB to AM a, B to A, M, like A, C to A, N. So it's exactly the same thing. But now, look at this. This is A, C, and this is A, C, which means A, C, A prime, C prime should be equal to A, N. So this should be equal to this. Now what we have, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and A, M, N, it's obviously that they are congruent because this is the same by construction. The angle is given as equal, and this we have just proven are equal. So we have a side, angle, side, equal to side, angle, side. So triangles are congruent. This one is similar to the big one, which means this one is similar to the big one, ABC. And to prove. So we are just using this proportionality to expand proportionality of these sides to, to, to basically equality of, of, of these segments. Now, the third theorem will be again similar to this one. Third is proportionality of sides. Proportionality of sides. Okay, let's do exactly the same thing. Okay, so we have A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay, and I know that all sides are proportional, which means uh, a prime B prime relates to A B as A prime C prime to A C equals B prime C prime to B C. Right? Okay. Doing exactly the same thing. A prime B prime, find the point M here and draw a parallel line. Always the same thing. Now, we know that this triangle, AMM, 
is similar to ABC, which means that AM, which is, by the way, equal to A prime, B prime, uh, relates to AB as this to this and this to that. So, in this particular case, on the left, since A prime, B prime is uh, equal to AM, I can write this. So, AM to AB instead of A prime, B prime to AB. But AM to AB, AM to AB, is exactly like MN to BC. Now, using this, as you see, we conclude that MN and B', B prime, C' prime are equal to each other. And, again, the same ratio is equal to AN to AC. AN Using this, you see AC are the same, so A prime C prime is, should be equal to AN. So this one we construct it as equal, and we have just proven that these lines, these segments, are also equal to each other. So these two triangles are equal to uh, three sides. So since these two triangles are congruent, and these two triangles are similar, this is similar to that. So we have proven the third theorem. So there are three um, theorems about uh, similar triangles. In a way, it is similar to three theorems about congruence of Triangles. So for triangles, we have what? Side angle side. For similarity, uh, we have proportional sides. Proportional side equal angle and proportional side. For uh, triangles, we have uh, two angles and side uh, in between for congruence. For similarity, two angles are sufficient. And finally, for congruence of triangles, we have uh, three sides supposed to be equal to each other. For similarity, uh, it's sufficient that they are proportional to each other. So in a way, it is basically similar. OK, I think I have covered uh, what I wanted about uh, different theorems of uh, uh, similarity. Yeah. So, for triangles, you basically have to remember these three theorems. And the way how they are all proved is basically the same way. I find one of the uh, 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 one of the sides of the bigger triangle, if you wish. I find I find the point uh, to cut the same length as the side of the smaller triangle, and then we're just using proportionality of the sides to basically prove the the theorem, all based on the same lemma, <clears throat> which is which is if triangle has a line parallel to uh, its base, it cuts from the top a triangle similar to the big one. Just, you know, that's the most important part of it. And the most difficult, actually. That's it for triangles. Um, everything should be on the unisor.com. I will load this, um, this lecture as well. Um, please use the site to basically go through the whole course of uh, algebra or, or geometry, etc., because the lectures are basically supposed to contain a, a concise course when one of the later uh, statements are always based on something which was done before that. 
So consider this not as a, as a reference material, this site, unisor.com, but um, as, as a textbook, which means you have to have chapter after chapter that are logically related to each other. And that's the way how I suggest you to study. And uh, that's exactly how I suggest parents and supervisors and teachers uh, to use this site for educational process uh, their students. Um, they can enroll students, they can check the scores and exams, etc. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.